Hi everyone, welcome to another Field Trip Friday. My name's Steve. And I'm Peregrine. Steve, where are we right now? Well, right now we're outside of the Randley Dairy Heritage Museum, which is part of North Carolina State University. And we're standing in this awesome pasture. And uh, Peregrine, tell us a little bit about what we're gonna see today. Yeah, I guess we're gonna be touring a lot of different parts of the, uh, the area. We're gonna be taking a look at the Heritage Museum. We're gonna take a look at some of the uh, dairy processing facilities. And we're going to see the Howling Cow Ice Cream Creamery. Awesome. We're going to take the trip from cow to cone. <laughs> Let's, Let's do, do it. it. All right. Where, where are we right now, my friend? We are at the Howling Cow Dairy Education Center in Creamery on Lake Wheeler Road in Raleigh. And this is attached to the NC State Dairy Farm that houses also the Randley Dairy Heritage Museum. Awesome. And, and who are you and what do you do here? <laughs> My name is Alex Ives and I'm the dairy education coordinator here at the, uh, at the Creamery and Museum. So I interact with the public. I do tours and we also have educational programs and kids camps that we do here during the summer. And we're getting ready to start our first, uh, our first kids camp. Cool. That sounds like a lot of fun. Can we take a look around? Absolutely. Let's yeah. go for a walk. Let's do it. Let's check it out. All right. So we're here to learn a little bit about the first step, but also the last step of the dairy process. Alex, can you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. We have got here uh, several different feeds that we feed our dairy cows here at NC State. Now, the thing to keep in mind is all dairy farms feed their cows a little bit differently. Some dairy farms will have their cows eat lots of grass on pasture. Other dairy farms like ourselves, we will actually grow crops and harvest crops and mix those crops up and, and feed them. So here are just a few of the ingredients that we feed. We have hay and straw. And these are just really good fiber, uh, fiber fillers for the cow. Our grain mix, now our grain mix is specially formulated and we actually have a nutritionist come to the dairy farm and she takes samples of all these different feeds and breaks down an analysis to see what exactly our cows need. And we can make up any nutrient, any nutrient deficiencies, we can actually make up by mixing this grain. So we're gonna put vitamins, minerals, we're gonna have some added uh, corn and uh, cornmeal and soybean meal added into our grain mix. Each of our cows feeds from our, our young calves all the way to our mature milking cows get their own separate kind of grain that's specially formulated for what they need. So these feeds down here are really interesting because they are waste products from other industries. This is called citrus pulp. So this is what's left over after they make juice in the citrus industry. Wow. So they dry out all of the pulp that comes out of that juice making process and we can feed it to our cows and it's a great source of sugar. This is cotton seed, so cotton seeds left over from the textile industry. Yeah. So another waste product that rather than going into a landfill can actually be fed to an animal who's gonna utilize it for nutrition. Now this has lots of great fat and energy for those cows. So just like we need fat, cows need fat as well and they can get it through these. And, and you and I can't eat these things, so we can feed it to cows. Cool. This last one is called soy hulls. This is what's left over after they are making the, the soybean process. Oh, cool. So this is, all three of these are recycled items. And there can be many other recycled items. Fruits and vegetables from the grocery store that you and I can't eat, that the grocery store has to throw away. We can actually feed some of them to dairy cows. Now we feed very small amounts of those, but they can, they don't go to waste. And that's the biggest thing that really plays a big role in sustainability and how dairy cows and all cows can fit in to making our ecosystem better. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that with us, Alex. Like, it, it just seems so cool the way that, that cows just like, yeah, fit into that, that cycle, that system of, of all these different nutrients moving through our ecosystems. Thank you for, for sharing a little bit, a bit of that. That's great. This is like a really interesting and 
amazingly cool looking space. Where, where are we? What do we do here? Or what do the cows do here? We're in the milking parlor. So this is physically where the person who's going to milk the cows in the morning and in the evening is going to stand. So we milk our cows twice a day. We milk our cows at 6 in the morning and 6 at night. Some farms will milk their cows three times a day. It just depends on the dairy farm. Lots of dairy farms do things differently. But most farms milk twice a day or three times a day. So our cows are going to come into this area, and the only thing we're going to see on the cow is their back legs and their udder. We're going to milk the cows between their back legs, and we have got a special monitor on that cow's neck strap. That cow's neck, neck strap has a transponder on it, so when she comes into this parlor, her number is going to come up on this screen right That's here, so, cool, yeah. so we know exactly who's standing in front of us. We're going to prep that cow, we're going to clean her udder properly. Uh, that cow's going to start to understand it's time to get milked, and, and she's going to let her milk down, and then we're going to put this milking machine up onto the cow. So these chains are here for when that cow is done milking. Uh, the milk flow slows down coming out of that cow. Our, ma our machine senses that and then automatically shuts off, and these chains pull that machine out from underneath that cow. Cool. So then we're going to look up on the screen again, make sure she's given her milk. It has the amount of milk she's given, as well as how long that milking machine is on that cow. So it usually takes about four to eight minutes to milk our cows, depending on how much milk she gives. So all of our cows vary a little bit in the amount of milk that they give. Once they're done, we put a protective dip on each of their quarters to make sure no bacteria can get up into their udder, and then we let them go. It takes about 15 minutes to milk this group of 10 cows. And like I said, the milking machine is on that cow for only about four to eight minutes. This space is literally really cool. Um, what's what's going on in this space, Alex? So this is called our freestall barn. Our freestall barn is where our cows live when they're not being milked. They also can go out to pasture, uh, but it's a lot cooler in here than it is out there. And we have got some really cool cooling effects for the cows too. So our cows live here in this freestall barn. The reason it's called the freestall barn is the cows are free to come over and eat some of their feed, they can go drink some of their water, or they can lay down. So we talked about comfort. Yeah. So keeping cows comfortable is really important. Our cows are bedded with sand, so our cows get to lay on the beach every single day. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And uh, so we want them to be really comfortable, so that sand is a really good, comfortable base for those cows to lay in. Gives like a nice kind of support of all Absolutely. of their body parts. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And also, we've got the fans running. The fans are running, and then we have sprinklers spraying that water on the cows. I always make the comparison. Have you ever been in a pool in a hot summer? You get up and the wind kind of blows in, you get kind of chill? Yeah. Well, that's exactly what we're trying to do with the cows. We're trying to evaporate evaporate that, that water off those cows to help cool them down even faster than them just blowing the air on. Yeah. Absolutely. So here in North Carolina, obviously, it gets really hot. So we need to do a lot to keep those cows cooled down because a cow's body temperature is normally 101.5 degrees. Oh, wow. So their body temperature is a lot hotter than ours. Yeah. So and that's because they're a ruminant. So as they're eating feed and processing that feed, uh, that actually makes that cow just naturally hotter. So we have to work a lot more to make sure we're keeping them cool and comfortable. Right, and I, I think you even mentioned that um, North Carolina is a little bit harder to, to raise cows than in some like like some of the places that we kind of classically associate with cows, like sure. Wisconsin, Wisconsin or upstate New York. Or, yep. um, and, and so North Carolina, we do have about 140 farms in North Carolina, and that's dairy farms, specifically dairy farms. And uh, there's about 45,000 dairy cows in North Carolina as well. Wow. So. Those cows obviously are spread across all the different farms, and all those different farms are gonna feed their cows a little differently. Like we had talked about before, uh, we feed our cows uh, corn silage that we harvest. So we're growing our crops on this land. 
we are harvesting those crops and feeding them to our cows and then we're getting our milk yeah. and then we're making all of our delicious milk products so all of our howling cow milk our chocolate milk our specialty howling cow power pack that's a sports uh, chocolate milk sports drink wow. with extra protein in it <laughs> and all of our howling cow ice cream comes from the milk that we've produced right here so another factor to that is cows produce a lot of waste cows produce a lot of manure so we are going to clean these barns every single day we actually clean these barns twice a day and all that manure and liquid that comes from that we're going to spread that on the fields as fertilizer for next year's crop right and we're also going to take the liquid and we're going to irrigate our crops with that gray water that comes from the waste from these cows so it's a full complete cycle that we're processing all of those feeds and all those cows are putting all those nutrients to work and then feeding us all that all the good protein and nutrients that they produce as well so Alex, you were telling us that 60 to 70 percent of everything the cows eat here is grown here. And something else that's, I think, arguably the most delicious outcome uh, that humans can eat here is some ice cream. Can you tell us a little bit about that process? Absolutely. We take all of that milk and we process it for our students on campus. And then we also make our Howling Cow ice cream. So today, you guys are going to get to enjoy one of our signature banana splits here at the Howling Cow Dairy Education Center in Creamery, and that's going to be the Wolfpack Split. Catherine is one of our employees here, and she is going to make that split for us. I'm so excited. This is delicious. <laughs> All right. So Alex, thank you so much for taking us on this journey today. This was really incredible. Seeing how y'all are using the cutting edge science that you use, the cutting edge technology, to make both life for your cows amazing, but also production of the dairy for your creamery the best that it can be. It's just been a true privilege. Thanks for letting us see a little bit. It's a real honor to be able to find the table experience. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks for coming. Yeah, I love the fact that you guys can help me accomplish my mission by spreading the word even further than I can right here. So I really appreciate what you guys do at the museum and having these great field trip projects too. Absolutely. So is there any way that people can connect to, to Howl and Cow more deeply? Um, or, or is there anything else you'd like to, to share? Um, for our so, we will start tours. I do give tours of the dairy farm for groups, uh, school groups, organized groups of more than 10 people. And we will do that on, uh, we will start doing that at the end of July. And we will uh, also start having some public tours that you can sign up online and come for a tour as well. Cool. That's awesome. Well, thank you again. I'm really looking forward to this uh, this banana split. I'm so excited. Thanks for having us. So, everybody watching, stay tuned for the live Q&A.
We'll see you in just a minute. We'll get to ask Alex all sorts of cool questions, and we'll see you there.